OpenAI just dropped an incredible demo showcasing their speech-to-speech -speech personal AI assistant. But if I told you that you can build something just as powerful without writing a single line of code? And if you missed the demo, don't worry, we'll be watching it together and breaking down exactly how it works behind the scenes. In this video, I'll show you exactly how to build a personal AI assistant that can manage your tasks, your inbox, your calendar, and more importantly, make calls on your behalf. And the best part, we'll be using simple, no-code platforms to do the complete setup. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll also be covering the cost of running this setup. And I think you'll be surprised. So strap yourselves in because today I'll be giving out all the sauce Let's get started. So those of you that missed it, OpenAI recently had their dev day where they released all their new features and releases. This account here shared a video on Twitter showcasing a demo of the live agent that they did. I've actually put this at 1.5 so we can quickly run through this. Could you place a call and see if you could get us 400 strawberries delivered to the venue? But please so they're placing an order for strawberries essentially. I'm on it. We'll get those strawberries delivered for you. <laughs> Yeah, we have chocolate, vanilla, and we have peanut butter. Wait, how much would 400 chocolate covers? 400, are you sure you want 400? Yes, 400 chocolate covers. Wait, how much would that be? I think that'll be around like $1,415.92. Great, where would you like that delivered? Please deliver to the gateway pavilion at 4 p.m. and I'll be paying cash. Right, cool, so I think that should cover it. Essentially, at the end, it just confirms the order. All right, then let's actually try and understand what's happening here. So this is a very high level overview of the whole process behind the scenes. But before we get into it, I want you to keep in mind, this technically isn't how they're actually doing it. And I'll explain why that is in a bit. So the first person gives a command to the agent via voice that goes into a speech to text model. This could be things like OpenAI or DeepGram, for example, that changes that speech into text. It's like a transcription model. And then the text goes into the LLM and that's like the brain of the agent. So it analyzes the user's query and then extracts all the different entities. For example, in this use case, it realizes that it needs to make a phone call and the instructions of the phone call needs to be that it needs to order 400 strawberries. And then it goes ahead and makes a function call to an external API. The external API is the one that handles the interactions with the user. And this could be something like Vapi. And that handles all the dialogue management, the decision making with the vendor, like the strawberry vendor. And then at the end of the call, after we get the confirmation, it creates like a summary of the whole transcript. And that gets returned into the LLM. The LLM then processes that text and then goes through to a text to speech model. OpenAI got their own voice models that do text to speech, but you can also do like 11 labs. And there's a bunch of other vendors that do the same thing. And then finally, the voice gets fed back to the user via the application. So like I mentioned earlier, technically this isn't how they're doing it because of the new feature that they released. And essentially these two here don't actually exist. We can go straight from the voice input directly to the LLM and then back out from the LLM via voice as well. And this is what they're calling real-time API. So we're able to do native speech to speech. So the model is able to actually handle directly speech. So there's no transcription involved. So the benefit of this is that we get a very low latency and makes the conversational flow a lot more natural. And then overall, the experience is just a lot better. And with that being said, now let's look at how I've actually built this. So I have this structure here with the different platforms that I've utilized. Essentially, I'm using Telegram for the input and outputs. I'm using NA10, which I'll explain in a second. But essentially, this is where we connect all the different applications together. And then for the phone handling, like I mentioned earlier, I'm using Vapi. So we have a voice input that goes into Telegram. So I'm able to just record a message that gets passed on to the trigger of the NA10 workflow. And we start with doing speech to text. So I'm using OpenAI's Whisper model. And then in a similar fashion, the LLM inside the agent processes the text and then makes a function call to an external API to Vapi's API. And then Vapi handles that whole complete conversation. And then we get the summary returned back into the agent, which gets forwarded to the user inside Telegram. So this is just a top high level view. But now let's actually dig into the different platforms and find out how I actually did this. So NA10 is an open source automation tool that allows for integrations of different apps together in like a visual workflow environment. I know that it might look intimidating or complex as we hop in but essentially all you need is a basic understanding of APIs and data manipulations and especially if you're familiar with make.com you'll be good to go right so let's take it step by step and actually try to understand what's going on let's first look at this top part here so the telegram bot triggers the agent and over here we're just extracting the text from the message and this if statement basically checks if it's voice or text if it's voice, it goes and grabs the file. Once we have it downloaded, we use an OpenAI Whisper model to get a transcription of the voice. Then we put the transcription into a variable that goes into the agent. And if the original message is text, we just go directly to the agent node here. So the agent here is connected to a bunch of things. First, it needs to connect to a chat model. So I'm using GPT-40, um, the latest one. And then for the memory, we're using window buffer memory. 
to keep the history of the conversation. Right, so the agent also needs to connect to a database whenever it needs to do the RAG part of the agent, so the retrieval part. And I have it connected here to Pinecone vector database. And essentially all I did was set up a CSV file containing the contact information. So we have the name, the type of contact, which will make more sense later on. I put myself as a friend, speed of service as a car garage, and a dental care for you as a dentist. Now we have the emails for each one, and then we have the phone numbers. So once that gets put into the vector database, anytime we need to grab someone's contact details, we can retrieve that. And then we get to the main section here. So we have all the tools that the agent has access to. So we can send an email, get unread emails, play a calendar event, get today's meetings, add to task and get today's tasks. But what we're going to focus on today is making a phone call. I won't be covering all these tools today, but once you understand the principles of creating a tool and connecting it to an agent, it's just a copy and paste job. So as an example, we have um, the send email tool. Essentially, all we do is give a description so that LLM knows when to actually make a call. So we say call this tool to send an email. And down at the bottom is where we pass all the parameters for the tool to actually accomplish the task. So for the send email tool, we need to send it the send to email. So that's the email of the recipient. We have the subject and then the message itself and essentially what it will look like actually i've got the today's meetings so you can see how simple this tool is and most of these tools are exactly the same they're very simple so the agent triggers this tool and passes the different parameters to it so in this example we have to give it the time frame of when to look so the parameters that i've chosen we give it the start of the day and then tomorrow at the start of the day so at 12 and then that gets converted into today and tomorrow essentially just using um, formatting and we pass those parameters to the node and it comes back with all the events that are in that time frame then we do some formatting just to extract all the different meetings and then finally we just set the response variable to the meeting list that we created from the previous node and that's how it gets sent back to the main agent again all of these tools are basically exactly the same the one we want to focus on today is this one here so let's actually see it. So this is actually the complete workflow here. And this is why it only took me one hour to put this together and actually create the VAPI assistant. So again, in a similar fashion, we grab the different parameters from the agent. So we want the first name, the type, the instructions that we're going to pass to VAPI assistant and then the phone number. And what we're doing here is we're utilizing dynamic variables to pass the different variables to the VAPI agent. So the agent itself is very simple. I'm using DeepGram for the speech to text and using 11 labs for the text-to-speech voice model. And I'm using GPT-4.0 model for the LLM. There's no knowledge base, the temperature hasn't been set, and the max tokens, these are all just default values. And essentially, this is the whole prompt here. It's very simple. We just say, you're a voice personal assistant for Ahmed, act as Ahmed. Please follow the given instructions below to the best of your abilities. And here we've got the different dynamic variables, so you'll be speaking with, and then it has their name. They are a type dentist, for example. And then we also give it the instructions of what to do on the call itself. And then there's some additional notes here to just so that it can behave as we want it to. So to actually make the call, we have to do a HTTP request. It's a post request to api.vapi.ai slash call. And the main part I want to focus on is the body of the request. And here's where we put the assistance ID. So you can just get that from at the top here. You just copy assistant ID and paste that back in here. We also need the phone number ID. And this is the phone number that you've purchased through Vapi itself. So you just click on here and it'll be right at the top. You copy the ID and paste it down, down below here. And for all the other variables, we got these from the LLM itself. And so we have the first name, type, instructions, the phone number, and the name of the person that we're trying to contact. And that goes off and makes the call outside of this workflow. And the tricky part was actually knowing when the call has ended so we can get the summary of it. So there's another request that we do to get the call status. So it's api.vapi.ai slash call. And then we pass it the call ID, which we get from the previous node. And this one here is a get request. And that's what we have to do. And that returns the status of the call and a bunch of other information that we don't need to worry about. And then I have this if statement. So there's a parameter called status and we're checking if it's not equal to ended. That means the call is still in progress. And if it is, we wait three seconds before we make another get request. And if this node returns false, that means the call has actually ended and then we're able to extract the summary from the previous node and that's under analysis dot summary and we assign that to a variable called response and that's how it links back to the main agent because when we call the tool we, there's a variable here so it says fill to return so when it sees the response in the last node in the sub workflow that's when it ends that sub workflow and returns back to the main agent so with that we've actually covered everything here i uh, don't think i'm missing anything um, essentially that goes back to the main agent and we do some formatting here in this node to send out to the telegram bot and i think we're ready to see an action so let's do that could you please call my car garage and book my car in for full service at the earliest available slot and but make sure it's a full service and also find out how much this would cost me so we've got the so this one's running okay we won't be able to see it while it's running um, so this is the sub agent. We've got a phone call here. 
I can't screen record this part. But yeah, we've got a phone call, so let's hear it. Hi, oh, yeah, this is Speedy Garage. How can I help you? Hey, I want to book my car for a full service package. Can you tell me the first available slot you got and how much it's going to cost? Right, so we actually have the bronze, silver and gold package. So if you want a full package, uh, full service, this will be a gold package. And that would cost you £200. Is that okay? Yeah, sounds good. What's your earliest available slot for that? So we've got an available slot at, let me quickly check. It's at 3 p.m. on Friday. Does that sound good for you? Yeah, that's perfect. Let's book it. Amazing. That's all confirmed for you. All right, so your car has been booked in for full service with speedy service. You've agreed to a gold package for £200. The appointment is scheduled for Friday at 3 p.m. So this has worked. So we can see here that we checked about eight times until the call was completed. Amazing. This one is also just catching up. But yeah, that succeeded as well. So you can see it went through. It detected that it was a um, a voice. Let me just zoom in. So it transcribed the, the audio, sent out to agent. We grabbed the phone number from the database and then we called the make phone call tool. So if you actually want to see a full demo of this, you can check out my other video where I go over all the different tools and test them all out. All right, so let's quickly cover the cost of running this setup. Uh, let's actually start with Vapi. So with Vapi, it costs us 12 cents per minute. And if I look at the call logs, so it's only 15 cents for the call that I just made. Next, let's look at the usage of OpenAI's API costs. And I've counted about 12 different commands that I've actually sent today while doing the testing and actually doing a demo. And all of these come down to 11 cents for, for today. And that includes the transcription of Whisper embedding model and the GPT-4.0 model. So that comes down to around one cent per command, which is absolutely nothing. And finally, for NA10 itself, they have a community version where you're able to self-host it yourself. So I have unlimited workflows, unlimited executions, and this is why I've chosen NA10 in comparison to make.com or Zapier, for example. So I've got this self-hosted into a virtual private server, but that server I've used for all my different projects and the different agents and tools that I've got. So it's actually negligible when it comes to using NA10. That server cost me around $20 to $30, depending on the usage. So you can see how this is actually not that expensive to run. Super cheap. You should definitely go and check it out. And that wraps up the video. I hope you have found this helpful or it sparked some ideas in your head. I would love to hear what you guys think in the comments down below. And please do me a huge favor and hit that like and subscribe button as i'll be posting regular videos like these deconstructing different ai demos and giving away all the source with that being said take care and i'll see you in the next one